my wife and I moved to Lake Tekapo about um, 1975 and we were part of forming an airline here that ran scenic flights and all. So lived in Tekapo uh, for quite a long time. I was a tourist traveling around the uh, world. They somehow I had a chance to come to Tekapo. That was a start of my um, stargazing career. About 2004, I reckon I had retired. Hede knocked on my door one evening, came in and um, explained to me that Nagoya University wanted to put a leading edge telescope on the top of Mount John. And they needed a New Zealand university as a partner to make it happen. So Hede and I got in the car the next morning and went up to Christchurch and we met a professor, F. Butler. He was head of the um, astronomy and physics. And if we were to try and bring some funds together to support the University of Canterbury, would they then in turn use them to support Nagoya? He was very, very forward looking and full of an initiative and enthusiasm. and He made that all happen. The only thing we hoped we would obtain as a result of our support was the key to the gate. We would love to open it up for astro-tourism. This is the place I can show more people uh, night sky. Probably not many Kiwis are aware of how special this night sky is. The center of the Milky Way it goes straight above on Zenith. And it wide up there and uh, tapering to both horizons. That never happened in North Hemisphere. Only this latitude make it happen. And we opened it up and said, come on everybody, come on up and have a look at Mount John Observatory and see what, see the, and enjoy the view. But really no one came. And sometimes we don't get three people a day. <laughs> one night, Hede and I were sitting under the stars here with no clients. And uh, he said to me, what to me personally are very famous words. You New Zealanders take your stars for granted. You don't appreciate the asset you have in your, your night sky. He said, if we had a sky like this in Japan, we would create a park to protect it. Now, I've heard of people being hit by religion and all sorts of things, but that sort of got at me a wee bit. And along with Hede, we started out on this crusade to try and create a park in the sky. Uh, the local people thought we were mad, and I regard looking back on that as it was a chapter of miracles. I was told of Graham Murray and Hide Osawa's conversation in Tekapo, where Hide declared that we do not appreciate the stars in this country and we should have a part to protect them. Phil conveyed to them that I was involved with UNESCO and perhaps I ought to be involved or engaged to see what could be done about establishing a World Heritage Park. It became perfectly clear that the only way you could include the stars in a World Heritage Site was if there was a land monument associated with the stars. We've got to find an alternative. The International Dark Sky Association had just been established and I said, why don't we go for dark sky status? We employed three um, University of Canterbury students over the summer of 2011 to 12 to prepare an application to IDA for a dark sky reserve in the Mackenzie Basin. 
And by the very end of January 2012, we sent it off to Arizona. And we had the answer in April of 2012 that Auraki McKenzie, as we decided to call it, uh, International Dark Sky Association had given us um, accreditation as a reserve, but actually the third reserve in the world and the first in the world to have gold tier status. Having that reserve um, really boosted astrotourism in New Zealand. First person supported my wish was Graham. And he pushed it and brought it to UNESCO and brought the ambition to the person who can help us. They arranged for me to, to go to an international conference in La Pomar in the Canary Islands. And the case we took to them was here we have one of the darkest skies in the world. We have a uni university research station uh, for astronomy. The, the beautiful turquoise blue of the lake takes its colour from the sky. Um, we have all uh, wide open spaces and all these attributes. And we also have lighting ordinances in place that protect the, the future of the night sky from light pollution. We need you, World Heritage, when you're assessing future World Heritage sites to look upwards as well as around you because our real heritage comes from the night sky. And uh, Carol and I are wandering around La Pomar about two days later, and a chap tapped us on the shoulder and said, you've got the full endorsement of the conference, 600 delegates. A year later, they nominated this site, Canterbury University Mount John Observatory, uh, and this environment around it, as the pilot scheme for the first World Heritage Park in the sky. So the trickle started, but the trickle after the La Pomar announcement turned into a torrent. And looking back, there were, we had the most incredible people helping us. Things got too big for us, and then Naitahu Tourism came alongside us in the Hawaka and said, we'll give you a hand, became 50-50% partners with Head A and I. So Earth and Sky is now history. The new future is Dark Sky Project. I want to tell you a story, 13.8 billion years in the making. It's the journey my te pō from darkness to night. The night sky is our home. Graham and Hede had been running this very successful astrotourism business on the lakefront of Takapo and they recognise the ability to expand their business and also the opportunity that uh, came with that to uh, venture with someone like Naitahu Tourism. And we're really lucky that our values and principles were very closely aligned, so it seemed like a really natural fit. When we started the relationship and developed the kaupapa for Dark Sky, uh, we understood rather rapidly just how important it was to, um, to revive some of that uh, mātauraka, some of those traditions and stories about the night sky. One of the ways of transferring knowledge was to be able to transfer the knowledge up into the stars, into the heavens. That, that pūrāko, that mātauraka was held up there in the stars until our people arrived in this huge land. And what they did then was they retransferred the, those uh, pūrāko to the whenua here. I was very fortunate that I've been involved uh, in our tribal learnings and Tātai Arorahi or astronomy has been part of that. 
some of my colleagues who were involved in Naitahu tourism recognised that there was some synergy there between the astronomical knowledge that I was uh, learning and uh, broadening and the work here at Dark Sky Project. I'm really confident given the 20 years that we've just experienced um, as being innovators, as being at the lead, at the fore of astrotourism, I'm excited to think of um, where we can go to in the future. I think that we have the opportunity to provide or offer products that really reflect our values and our principles, and in particular sustainability um, and our responsibilities to be kaitiaki or guardians of not only the earth but also the sky. And so I think that there's some real uh, energy there that we can lean into to promote dark sky awareness and get more people looking up and enjoying our night skies. I would like to see New Zealand become a dark sky nation. We're in heaven here, aren't we? Takapo is a very special place. The night sky is one part of our environment we have shared with all cultures in all periods of human history. Whether one's in love or whether one's had a tragedy or lost a loved one, anywhere in the world, I think we all look upwards. <laughs>